So in the continuation of rebuilding this MS-180C, uh, since it hasn't been ran in a couple years, you better take your tarp apart and at least look at it. I got a kit here in case we need it. Uh, I imagine, like I said before, this was left with gas in it. So at least we need to clean out the orifices, check what's going on, make sure the diaphragm isn't all warped and funny like they usually get when they sit. Um, so we're going to take it apart. I'll show you how to uh, kind of rebuild this. We're not going to do a total rebuild because uh, I don't think it's necessary. That wasn't the problem when the saw was shut off, but I'll have show you a couple things to look for and a couple things how to set it so you don't have uh, problems, hopefully, when you put it back together. So, got a nice little pad set up here so I can put stuff down without uh, very easily losing it, which still could happen. First thing we're gonna do is take off both of these plates. bottom of this one is actually is where your fuel comes in and you can see materials are a lot better than they used to be this uh, plastic diaphragm here uh, there's a little bit you can see where it's been compressed and where it hasn't been, where it sucks the gas in, which I really don't think that's that bad. This gasket appears to be in good shape. I always remember the gasket goes on before the diaphragm. Now this is the actual pump side. It's not a fuel pump in the sense of what you normally think of. It is a diaphragm pump. I guess I probably shouldn't call the other side a diaphragm, but where the fuel bowl comes in. So instead of having a, a actual uh, fuel bowl that holds fuel, it's just a tiny, tiny little fuel bowl here. I'm oh, sorry. So what that does is this pulls up and picks up vacuum off of the bottom side of the engine here which is vacuum and so as the engine goes up and down and the piston go I'm sorry as the piston goes up and down in the cylinder it's going to when it goes up it's going to create vacuum in here because it's going to want to pull everything. This goes right directly into the chamber. And then this, let's see if I got this right. This should be um, hooked into the bottom of the case there. Yep. Okay. So that's where this one gets. Sometimes they just got to, um, it's almost like a, just a little tube that comes out and that's uh, for your pickup. So if you have a saw that starts and dies, let me get another carburetor around here. one that starts up and dies right away or you can't get started and if you pour a little gas down in the throat of the carburetor and you can get it to run on say they call prime but it won't stay running usually the problem is either some of the older models this was a hose and not a whole manifold that hose had a tendency to crack and suck air and if you suck air then you don't have any vacuum um, I'm going to go, this looks very clean, so 
I'm not going to go too deep into. We're not going to take out. Here's the screen. It's uh, like the last line of defense. Gets past the filter, picks up the screen, so it doesn't come in and cause problems with the needle and the seat that's down in there. We'll take that out just to look at it. Give you a chance to explain how that works. If anybody is wondering. There is a spring underneath that. So, like I said before, a good rule of thumb is just to imagine anything you take apart, there's a spring in there. And it will go flying. And that's the that spring is right there. It's about like a tiny little uh, spring that would be inside a ballpoint pen. That's the pin. This is what actually connects to the needle. So the needle, dang it, the needle actually rides here, the pin through. And the needle goes down right. Get it up there. Into that. I want to adjust on me. Into that hole on the end of my finger. You can see down there there's a little hole. And it's a little, I think it's just a little stainless. This one must have a little bit of a, a rubber end. Sometimes it's the other way where the seat is the rubber or vitin or neoprene but this actually will sit in there and that's what closes off your fuel so you don't have fuel running over and actually you will let your fuel in so and where that hits is right on that nipple right there so as the vacuum pulsing creates this diaphragm to go up and down up and down, up and down, up and down. That hits right here on the back side of the lever for the needle and seat, which causes this to go up and down, up and down, which in turn causes your needle to go up and down, up and down, up and down in the middle and the seat, which goes through a bunch of orifices in here comes out no I'm, I'm sorry I had the backwards it's coming in this way fills up this compartment yeah and then goes through the uh, metering system so my apologies, I didn't didn't properly set up uh, my technical words. So, if there's any question on something I said wrong, please clarify or feel free to research it yourself. So, we took that out. I see no reason to replace any of this. It is. A little war but let's uh, but not bad see now the gasket goes on and then the diaphragm if you are on the carb so I think I might have I think I might have said that wrong earlier you want to make sure that got that the right way and usually a good way to do it even if I tell you wrong because let's face it we all mess up all the time I mean that's the only way you really learn so 
take what I show you and apply it in your own way. And it'll help you. I'm not uh, an expert uh, builder. I just have learned how to do it for myself over the years. <clears throat> now, don't throw away your old stuff if you are replacing it because that always, like, uh, you can see where that's been riding and where it has been compressed and where it hasn't been compressed. And that uh, usually gives you a good indication if you, uh, if you do become disoriented on the way that it goes back together, it'll usually give you a good hand. So the easiest way that I found to put these back together is to put the seat in there. Slide the pin through the lever and then slide everything in place. Kind of mocked up there. Then we'll get our screw that holds the works together. Or holds it down. We're going to get in there and I'm just going to just start it enough. I'm going to tighten it down. I want a little extra leeway. Because what I take to do is you take in oh maybe a quarter to a third of the way down on the spring here. You put it on a little flathead screwdriver. And the idea is going to be to try and you got to get that spring back in there and you can do it the other way where you hold it all together but usually in my case it ends up going flying so what I'm gonna do is get kind of work this down in the spot that it goes and then it works better in there I'm gonna compress the spring it's a lot harder showing people than it is just doing it so I'm gonna Get this over here. Let's see if this will show a little better. So what I'm going to do is take this to the side here. See how that screw kind of holds everything in. And I'm just going to work that down in there. Then I can hold it with my finger and get a little bit higher grip and you see how it let me show you the right angle how it works there now you can compress it and tighten down the fastener and you can see now how this diaphragm or not diaphragm the needle seat go up and down with the lever as the diaphragm moves now there's depending on the carburetor and it'll tell you in the kit that you get most likely that if you look down this side the level of this it'll tell you most commonly it's supposed to be and that's why I have this out they're not right out of the box perfect so this one's pretty close here what you want to do is get that level almost in straight flush line with take a straight edge across the carburetor body and it it could go up a little bit I'm gonna just a little you'll know when you go too far there's gas will run everywhere all the time. And if it's not enough, you won't get any fuel. So I bend it up a little bit. And a good way that I found to double check that before you go and put it all together and put it on the saw and then find out that you did have it adjusted wrong is I'm going to go ahead 
and that's usually the last step I do. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. Create a nice seal. Okay, now this side, I'm going to put that down. I'm just going to hold it. So you can see where that, that little mark has not been compressed. And that goes on the only hole that doesn't have a screw in it here. I'm going to put this back together. And I'm just going to hold it with my hand. And I'm going to blow through this little piece of hose. You can hear diaphragm working. If you get air any either way, there's a problem. Now I'm going to take this off and I'm just going to blow into it and I'm going to manually activate the lever for the needle and seat and make sure that one, it doesn't, should have figured it out with the diaphragm on it. It doesn't, if it's leaking air, you know it's too far. Yeah. I want to find out how far I got to press this level before air will go through it. I don't know if that's coming through on the mic, but that's pretty good. It doesn't leak at all, and you don't have to depress it much, and it will let air through, which in turn, when it is on the saw, will let fuel through. And then just double check it again. I like to, and that's why I like to hold this on there and try it. Because sometimes you get it just right, and then maybe you got the diaphragm wrong, on the wrong side or upside down, or the diaphragm's messed up, and you put it on there. And if you blow through there and get air, that means gas will leak through. Either your lever is out of adjustment or there's something wrong with the diaphragm. But that's pretty good. I'm just going to pull that off. And we're going to put this back together. down most of the way but just to speed things up it's always best to tighten this stuff by hand just so you know you don't it's really easy with those impact guns to over torque now this is a, a newer carburetor out of a smaller saw so it does not have uh, your high and low uh, meter valve adjustments so there's another point to take out and clean and inspect when you're taking a carve apart. Um, on bigger saws, especially pretty much all older saws. And here's on a bigger saw, I think this is out of an MS-361. It has the adjustments there, but it also has a kind of a dummying feature that you can't uh, over adjust and send it way out of whack. So that's uh, carb ready and uh, should be able to put it right back in the saw. Uh, usually prime it with a little bit of gas down the, the throat when it's in here and hold the throttle wide open and uh, give it a couple tugs. Have a little little bottle that I keep gas in so you don't spill everywhere so uh, thanks for watching and I will maybe shoot one when I get a bigger carburetor
that uh, is 